In this video, we're going to take a look at derivatives of trigonometric functions. So we want to start with finding f prime of x when f of x is equal to sine of x. Well, to do that, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h. And by a formula from pre-cal, we have that this is the limit as h goes to 0 of, and then sine of x plus h is actually sine of x times cosine of h plus cosine of x sine of h. And then we still have the minus sine of x here, all over h, which is the limit as h goes to 0 of, let's move this term and this term out together, and so then we have sine of x times, we factored out a sine of x out of this term and out of this term, so we're left with cosine of h minus 1, and then plus cosine of x sine of h all over h. And then we can separate further. We can do the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x times the limit as h goes to 0 of, and then this part of this uh, left term. So we get, oops, uh, cosine of h minus 1 all over h plus the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine of x times the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h. All right. Well, what is this? The limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x is just sine of x there's no h in there. And what is the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h? Well, this is actually something we did earlier in the semester. Or rather, I think I proved the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h is 1, and then said similarly we have a limit as h goes to 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h is 0. So limit as h goes to 0 of cosine of x is just cosine of x. And limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h, as I just said, was 1. That's what we actually proved earlier in the semester. Uh, and so this is just 0. The first term is just 0. So we're just left with cosine of x. And that is our derivative of sine of x. Nice. Okay. Well, similarly, we can show that the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. But we'll go ahead and skip writing out the proof because it's done almost the exact same way uh, that finding the derivative of sine of x was done. Well, let's do a couple of derivatives here using that information. So example one here is going to be find d dx of tangent of x. Let's find the derivative of tangent. Well, how do we do that? Well, d dx of tangent of x is the derivative of, well, tangent is sine over cosine. 
So, how do we solve this? Well, that's our uh, quotient rule, right? So what's the derivative of sine of x over cosine of x? Well, that is the denominator, cosine of x, times the derivative of the numerator. Derivative of the numerator is cosine of x minus, so low d high minus high the sine of x times the derivative of the denominator, which is negative sine of x all over the denominator squared. All right. And this is, oh, this is cosine squared plus, because we have two negatives here, plus sine squared. All over cosine squared of x. Well, what is this? This numerator is 1, right? That's one of our um, Pythagorean identities. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, so this reduces to 1 over cosine squared. Or, in other words, the quantity 1 over cosine squared. But 1 over cosine is secant, so this is secant squared of x. So that's our derivative of tangent. And so now we have that one. Let's do one more here. Let's do the derivative of secant of x. Well, this is the derivative of 1 over cosine of x. And again, we just apply our quotient rule. So this is equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator which is just 0, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is negative sine of x all over the denominator squared, which we can write as sine of x, positive sine of x, over cosine of x times cosine of x. And there's a reason I separated those here. And that was because we can write this as 1 over cosine of x times sine of x over cosine of x. And this gives us uh, what we normally see as the derivative of secant, because 1 over cosine is secant again, and sine over cosine is tangent. So this is how we normally write out the derivative of the secant of x. And that is secant tangent. Secant times tangent. So now we have the derivative of secant as well. I'm going to go ahead and just write out what the derivative of cosecant and cotangent are because they can be found using the exact same method that we just did, which is to convert to sines and cosines and then apply the quotient rule. So I'm not going to go through doing that again. I'm just going to write out what those are. The derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared of x. And the derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant cotangent. So we have these two derivatives as well to round out our list of the derivatives of our trigonometric functions. Uh, and that will end this video.